Right, can you crack into this bowl three eggs? Oh, yeah. Family is everything to me. Yeah. Look at that. That's fantastic. Since becoming a parent, I base my whole life around family. How are you going to do some whisking, sweetie? It's opened my eyes to that amazing circular motion of life. Yeah. Presenter Fern Cotton began her career in children's television before becoming a household name with her Radio 1 show. My parents definitely instilled a work yeah. ethic in me which has gone on to you know, help me out massively in you know, how I do work and my career. I've got this drive and it's a burning drive inside and I know that comes from my ancestry. That's not just something that I've got, that comes from a whole heap of stuff behind me. Today, as well as broadcasting, Fern writes books and looks after her two children at their home in southwest London. My own upbringing, I guess, was, well, it was pretty normal to me. One. Grew up thinking, there's nothing very exotic or exciting about this. So I think I'm actually looking forward to looking into those other stories and seeing if there was explosive dramas or strange jobs, lots of travelling. Mm. All that sort of stuff that I felt wasn't really in my own childhood. Oh, you've done a great job there, guys. And I think that will be a really wonderful gift to give to my children and to sort of pass on. I'm terrified. <laughs> so excited, but I'm so nervous. Fern is on her way to visit her parents, Mick and Linda, at their home in Buckinghamshire. I think I'm an even split of both parents. I've got my mum's sort of tenacity and drive and fire. But then, weirdly, I've got my dad's side, which is very calm and grounded. And I'm kind of a weird mix of both, depending on what I'm dealing with in life. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. What are you doing here, then? <laughs> Mwah, Daddy. Hi, Fanny. Let's head in. So I wanted to have a chat with you about something that's quite obvious, but I've never bothered asking you, really, and that's about your parents, my grandparents. Cos you don't really ever have those chats, do you? We're kind of just going about our everyday business mm. and... It's a good thing to do. I think so. Because, I mean, I wish I'd quizzed my grandparents mm. and parents more when oh, they were alive. I know. So catch us while we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's lovely Sylvia and Phil. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, my memories of, I mean, especially your dad, I mean, he was hilarious and crazy, mm. wasn't he? Mm. He would have loved nothing better than sat at a table with about half a dozen kids yeah. eating blancmange yeah. and jelly yeah, and wearing yeah. a paper hat. Yeah, I remember. being ridiculous, yeah. yeah. He was such a funny man, wasn't he? Yeah, he was great, actually. Oh, I do miss him. He was amazing. It's a lovely picture, that. What about Nan Sylvia's parents? Were they all London-based? Well, they, they all originated from Suffolk and Norfolk. OK, I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, do I remember correctly, or have I made this up, that there's, because of a surname ending in B-Y, what would that be? Apparently, this is only sort of hearsay. Yeah. Um, if your um, surname ended in B-Y, as theirs did, Which, will be... Will be, that's will it, be. will be. I think BY is Norse for Viking settlement. Okay. And then lovely Nan Ruby. So Nan Ruby, your mm. mum, Dad. Obviously, we just come back from a holiday by the look of it. Always. That's yeah. one of the things I remember about your mum is. Yeah. Um, always on holiday. Always. I think she had a hotline to Lun Polly. And she <laughs> yeah. Ring them and say, "What's? Have you got any last-minute cancellations?" I and know. they go away the next day. What I know, I guess, about Nan, your mum, is that she was born in Wales. Yeah. And yeah. if we look at the first certificate, you can see exactly where she was born. She was born in 1922, Evelyn Street, Abit Abitillary. Yeah. That's in South Wales. South Wales, yeah. And then her dad, Evan Meredith. Mm -hmm. And then her mum, Elsie Meredith. And that's so strange to read, cos I didn't know their names mm. and I never got to meet. Evan Meredith, because he died quite a long time before 72. I was born. Seventy-two. Yeah. yeah, so sort of nine years before I was born. What does that say? Coal cure. So that was that whole it's area, a coal, mine, was a coal mining yeah. area. Yeah. What do you remember about your granddad? Um, we always had a, his face in a book, 
He'd had his own chemist shop, opticians. He developed into, you know, a very, very clever, intelligent man, having come from a coal miner. Yeah. yeah. Have uh, you got any pictures of Evan? Yes, yes. There's a very interesting one there. Oh, wow, look how smart he is in that uniform. Over 100 years ago. Goodness me. So, well, yeah, look, this is 1913. It says, Dad, St John's Ambulance. Wow. So he was... How old here? Does that make him? Uh, 13. I think he was born 95, 1895, so 18-ish. And I can see, like, because I've never seen a picture of him in my life, but mm. there's the family resemblance. You can kind of see yeah. the nose. Not and... so much. I can see it. Mm. Definitely. Ruby. I can see Nan, 100% mm. Nan Ruby. Mm. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Like yeah. the nose yeah, and the mouth, the chin. And so if this was in 1913 and, and, and he was already putting himself to great use, mm. do you know what he did in the war? Not really. Um, never, certainly never spoken about, not by, not by my mum or, or certainly by uh, Grandad Evan. He wasn't around, I know that much, but... What he did or where he was, I've actually got no idea. Well, that would be really interesting to mm. find out, I think, wouldn't it? Yes. Do a bit more delving yes. around Evan's story. Yes. Fern has discovered that before becoming a chemist, her paternal grandmother Ruby's father, Evan Meredith, was a coal miner from South Wales. 